Hello everyone, it's Artisan Tony, and it has been a while since I have done a SketchUp video, and that's because I've been actually using uh, SketchUp to do work. I've had several large uh, projects uh, to do, and I've just about finished them up, so now it's time to have a little fun and talk about some of the extensions I use. The main extension I use is Medeek project, the foundation, the trust, the wall, the electrical even. So I use all these extensions basically on a daily basis. And I thought what would be fun is to just see how quickly I could reproduce a project that I helped my son with. He needed a, an outdoor studio, 16 feet by 12 feet. And I clicked, oops typed that wrong, 16 feet by 12 feet, and um, because he is having children, <laughs> and his wife kicking him, kicking his studio, you know, he's a professional musician and teaches music and uh, plays gigs, but he, he has a, a studio at home, and then a one that he, uh, you know, has uh, remotely, and uh, his wife's kicking him out. And he's almost finished with this thing now. And I thought it would be kind of fun to go back and uh, see how quickly I could reproduce this thing. And well, I just thought it would be fun to use Medeek extensions, make a group, to see how quickly I could do just reproduce it. Uh, now, what we did with Barrett's project, it's set up to, I'm going to use the stem wall foundation. It's set up to move later on, so. Uh, but I thought it would be fun just to show how the um, the foundation uh, extension works. And there's a lot of parameters. I'm just going to leave all these the way they are for now, just to show you how easy that can be. If you just need a little crawl space foundation, it's got the anchor bolts and uh, the footings, and there's rebar in there. Trust me, there's all kinds of stuff in there that uh, that's useful. And so now I'm going to grab the floor extension, which is awesome. And there are lots of things we can do with this too, but I'm going to, I want to, I like the plywood subfloor. So, I would yeah it's set up so we're good so I'm just gonna go go this way I may have to turn the joist yeah I'm gonna have to turn the joist but no big deal that's easy to do I like the plywood subfloor we actually did use pressure treated plywood on the floor because of uh, it's a it's I've got it set up on these runners so where he can move it later on I'm going to quickly move these floor layers that it created into my floor folder because I like keeping these layers uh, organized. Okay, so now I'm going to go in there. I'm going to turn off the sheeting right quick and I'm going to select this because your joists want to run in the short direction. Edit floor. Here we go. 90 degrees. Update. And if I want to go down and put, you know, blocking, uh, metal bridging, here's a good one. Um, but what I'm going to do on this one is we put blocking in because the pressure treated plywood was not tongue and groove. Let me move this up here. And um, row spacing was 48 inches. Okay. And we don't want it. No, we don't want it staggered. We So the, all the joints line up. Let's see what that looks like. So that's perfect. We had two rows of, of blocking. What that did was, since the plywood was not tongue and groove, it, you didn't have any deflection where the plywood met. So if we turn that back on, you can see there's our rows of plywood there. And if you could see through that, you could see the blocking is there supporting that. So it's just a really cool way to do it. When I do houses, I always draw, or any other building, I always draw a two-dimensional floor plan. 
and uh, I set it up with you know in the floor first floor plan and tags and all that but I'm trying to do this kind of in a fun quick way so I'm just gonna pull it out and I'm gonna show you a feature that you can use for the walls is a new relatively new feature where you can select a, a surface a face let me go in and select that now let me just explode this There we go. I'm just going to select that face. And under the new wall tools, you can draw a wall perimeter with just selecting a face. But first, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to change this to 97.125 because our back wall, one wall was 8 feet and the front wall was different. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to change this to board and batten. I'm just going to say OK, because the rest of it's probably OK. Oops. Oh, it worked anyway. That's crazy. I closed it down and it worked anyway. OK, so now I, I, I could have just traced around. You know, if I wanted to just use the sort of the original wall tool, I could have just selected the corners like this, drawn around, you know, I would have gotten the same thing like that. But if you're doing a big project and you've gone through the process like I do of drawing a floor plan, a two dimensional floor plan, then, you know, doing that face deal is a pretty good, pretty good option. So I'm just going to delete that since I went through the trouble. And then what you do here. If I had thought about it, I would have extended. I can go in and edit the wall. I can go down to the sheeting. I mean, the um, cladding. And down here where it says B for bottom, you can extend this like, uh, I think it's like 12 inches you have to go. All right? See how you can extend the siding down to cover? And then another cool feature is if you go into the wall tool, you can go into copy wall. Go, grab the wall you want and go down and select that parameter and hit update and then you can just select all the other walls that you want to update and that's a really cool option all right now here's a cool uh feature so on barrett's uh is a shed it's a single slope but what you can do is basically I think this wall was 12 feet so we're going to go in here and edit this we're going to try to make this 144 update okay now we're going to convert these side walls to shed walls shed wall edit wall assembly you see right here we're going to gable shed hip we're going to say gable and then you have this opportunity to make the wall height different on each end. And I'm going to make this one 144. Okay. Oh, that's the wrong one. Let's, uh, let's copy this. Roger. And we're going to put 144 here. There we go. And we're going to grab that one and convert it to a shed and maybe I'll get lucky this time 144 there we go the walls when you're doing them they go in you know counterclockwise when they're building themselves so you just have to pay attention to where the start and the stop is okay so there we go we're getting there now one thing I wish I had done is not deleted my Draw it again. Again, this is where I love to have a uh, 16 foot by 12 feet. I love to have a two dimensional uh, floor plan that I refer to when I am. I actually will do the view. You know, when I do my floor plans in paper space in layout, you'll act, it'll actually be referring to the two dimensional floor plan. Um, that's just, you know, I'm old school, so I like doing it that way. The reason I'm doing that also is because when you get ready to do the roof here, the roofs are a little more tricky 
is if I go to roof rafters and I pick a shed roof, I'm going to select this point right here. But you see, now I got to, I can't, I guess I could turn off the, uh, let me turn off. We'll just try this. I'm trying to do this kind of in a quick way. I'm trying to show you how easy this can be using these extensions. I remember I used to do all this by hand. If you look at some of my original, if, as long as you keep that on the green axis, you see now it's not, there we go. Now we can go down here to the other end of the framing. And now see that it's backwards. I should have started from the other end. What I'm going to do though is I'm just going to leave it and I'm going to flip it around because I don't want to mess with it. I'm just going to turn it around. Uh, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab it. None of this is a big deal. 180. Boom. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to turn off the, the cladding and the sheathing, the roof decking, as I call it. And I'm going to grab, let me turn off the, oop, we got some roof. Layers down here that need to be moved up. No biggie. Just grab them. Stick them up there. And I've got to keep this nice and tidy as I go. Can't let it get out of hand. Turn off the soffit so I can see. Grab this point right here because that sits on the wall. Now I'm just going to have to kind of play because I forgot the roof pitch. So that goes there. Oh, did I get lucky? Ooh, I did get, I got kind of lucky. Okay. I think I remember we made this, we made this, uh, front wall 12 feet and the back wall eight, eight feet. So it looks like we're a little off, but I think what we did was we just, uh, we kind of, you know, we made it work out on the site. So I'm just going to leave it like that because, uh, I don't want, I'm trying to show how you can do this quickly if you want to. So this outline, this roof outline needs to go away. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn the siding back on just so we'll have a nice little reference. We're going to turn it back on the wall cladding. Where is it? There it is. And wall trim and soffit pretty stuff back on and we're going to go from there so what we had was and one thing you can do to kind of take care of this little deal right here is you can raise up the wall trim if you go in here and edit the wall you can run down here to the trim and look for the freeze board and well know what you would do is you would go add some height like three inches that and see it'll it'll bump up and you can do that on all the all the sidewalls too let's see if i can just do it without causing a, a big hoopla and then top three looks like it's not quite three but we're gonna we're gonna bump it up anyway so you get that that's uh, easy to do uh, now i've got now since i'm anal about this i'm gonna go ahead and change this one <laughs> Can't leave one of them unchanged. There we go. Got it up there. Did I not select that? Wall. I'm getting in a hurry. Oh, that's the sheathing. Let's leave the sheathing alone. Let's go down here to cladding. And we'll do here. There we go. Trying to get in too big of a hurry. I'm just trying to show you that you can... Uh, can do this in a timely manner if you want to using these extensions otherwise this would have taken me several days to do let's turn the roof cladding back on that looks better okay got our gutters back there you can extend the gutters on down that's pretty cool let's go ahead and make it a 16 inch overhang that's what we did on barrett's it looks better 16 here 16 uh, somewhere there is a 
gable end overhang. There we go. That already says 16. What about that? All right, update. Let's go down to gutters. Let's make them about 20 inches longer. Two. Update. There you go. That works. Now, let's quickly put in his door. This thing looks small, but when you go inside, I'm going to show you a video in a minute uh, where he's finished, and you'll see that it's uh, pretty cool. We're going to go to door, and we're going to, wait, oh, there is a door. We're going to, he used a, just a typical, um, I don't know, I like the full glass, that's what we're going to do. So it's somewhere right in here. And I'm, again, I'm not going to get anal with this stuff, okay? I'm just going to do it the way I remember it. And we had two windows. We had, yep, that's about right. And uh, they were like right here and right, uh, right there. There was equal space between them, okay? And that's, that's pretty cool. And that worked out good. And now we're going to put the windows up here. This can get a little tricky, but you just have to pay attention to what you're doing. Window, I think those were 36 by 24. And we're going to say those head heights were 100, 120. Let's see if that works. Let's see. I think they were a little bit taller than go to 130. I don't remember exactly, but I do remember they were like clear story height. Yeah, that looks better. They were centered on these. Okay. Like that. And this is working out pretty good. It's not giving me any trouble. We had one over the door like that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now you see, we've got ourselves a shed, a little studio. Oh, we got to turn off the wall framing sometimes this is something it does which is no big deal when you put a window above a door you can see here the framing didn't build itself under the window but sometimes when you're over a door it will it will fill in the framing there and i think that's why i started off with a new little project because uh, I had to explode the wall and go in and delete those studs out. But that's basically it, guys. That that uh, It's an awesome little project. And uh, it looks small for some reason in this, this, this rendering. But when you go inside, there's enough room for all of his equipment. You know, it's 16 feet long, 12 feet wide. There's enough room for all of his drum equipment, his pianos, his you know, keyboards. He's got, you know, several drum sets, uh, guitars that hang on the wall, and it's just going to allow him to have some space out, out. And he's got a mini split hanging on the wall back there, and we ran underground power to it uh, up here. And it's just uh, pretty awesome. But let's go see if I can find some pictures. Okay, so here is one picture of it being completed right after Barrett uh, painted it. He did a pretty good job, and uh, there's another short video here of where he is walking through just recently when he finished the inside for the most part. I think he had some uh, touch-ups to do, but and forgive the forgive the millennial vertical trying to do horizontal video. Sorry about that, but you can see there. I'm not sure why the video quality is that bad, but. You can see that he's got tongue of groove on the ceiling, the fan up, it's all drywalled and trimmed out. It's just going to be a nice space. You can see it looks like it's a bigger space than it looks in, in, the, uh, in the model. So I just wanted to show you Medik Designs uh, website. This is it. And let's see, I think, am I logged in? Let me see if I can log in here. I can show you the different extensions. There's the truss, foundation, wall, floor, electrical, and project. And then if you 
just go back here, you can see here are the where you would download them here. I think he has a trial. You can there's a trial version of each one of these, and uh, they're pretty awesome. I mean, I literally used to draw studs and plywood and everything by hand, and uh, the cost of these extensions is well paid for itself, um, especially if you're in the industry. Um, it's, it, uh, it works out really well. So if you need some help uh, with your project, you can go over to atdrafting.com and check out our website. And I have a little slider here showing some photographs and different projects here. You can also go to our project map and see uh, the worldwide effect of uh, atdrafting.com and uh, have some interesting projects there. And if you want to, if you want help, you can go here to request service, fill out this form, send it to me. I'll get back with you and we can work out uh, a way that I can help you. Well, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next SketchUp video.